I'm giving myself a raise this year, and here's why. Hey, if we haven't met yet, I'm Phoenix, and I'm the Tattooed Piano Teacher. When I first started my very own piano teaching business, I kept my rates the same for five years. And now I raise them slightly every single year. Why do I raise my lesson rates? Well, because I have goals. And because it's my business, and I know what I want out of it, so it would be silly to stifle that. That's how I feel about that. Now I know that a lot of people look at the competition around their area or online lessons and they base their pricing on that. My pricing has nothing to do with a competition because I'm my own person and if someone wants to take piano lessons from me, then I know that they're gonna pay my rate. And if someone wants to take piano lessons from somebody down the block, then I know they're gonna pay their rate. That's not to say that there aren't people who base their piano teacher on how much it costs and are on a really tight budget. I realize that, but I don't have to be everybody's piano teacher. I just want a small, community of really dedicated students that want to take lessons from me and can afford me. I know that that's not everybody's attitude and that's totally fine. Everybody's goals are different so everybody's rates are going to be different. The beauty of being a piano teacher is that you don't have to compete with the entire world. How many piano students do you want and then how much do you want to make? So my rates have nothing to do with the competition, how the economy is doing. My rates are based on my goals. Goals. Everything I've said so far in this video has sounded incredibly selfish. <laughs> And that is going to be kind of the vibe of this video. But we are talking about money. So do I want to be the best piano teacher to my students that I possibly can? Absolutely I do. Do I care about my students? Do I care about music education? Do I care about spreading the love for the piano to my community? 100% top of the list goal. That's actually why I'm charging a higher rate because that fits more in with my goal. My goal isn't to reach the masses. My goal is to really, really foster the love of music in a few precious souls that find me. Now, I was definitely raised to worry about what other people thought about me and to always be nice to everybody, which doesn't always work too well as a business owner or somebody who has big dreams and big goals. So I definitely have some internal pushback and I'm sure you do too. Every time I raise my rate, oh, all of those like doubts and questions creep up on me, imposter syndrome, yes, I have all of that, I do. But I overcome it with this question. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that has happened in the last five years that I've been raising my rate, I have had a couple of families quit. So that's happened. I didn't have everybody quit. I've never gotten an angry phone call or email about my rates going up. I've just had a couple of students that I lost over the years and that's, that is my worst case scenario. And to reach my goals, that's, that is what's happening. So think about that. All right, that's all I'm gonna say on that soapbox. When should you raise your rates? The answer for me personally is once a year until I fulfill my goals. That to me feels better than jumping from point A to point B all in one go, where you might actually lose half of your students or something like that, or people are really gonna be struggling to make a really tough decision if they love you and can't afford you. So for me, raising just a little bit each year just to match the cost of living and to slowly make it to my income goals, that's what feels right to me. Because at the end of the day, I don't wanna lose my students. I love my students. I choose to raise my rates just before the summer trimester. So I split the calendar year into three trimesters. There's summer, which is June, July, August. Then there is the fall trimester, which is September, October, November, December. And then the spring trimester is the longest one. That's January through May. So that's how I split up the year. And I offer a little bit of a discount to those who pay in full for a trimester. Obviously, summer is the shortest one because it's only three months. So they're building Bill is going to be smaller because it's three months versus four or five. So right before the summer trimester, that is when I raise my rates because even with the rates a little bit higher, their overall bill is still going to look smaller than it did for the previous trimester. And that's not to be tricky. That's just like shelling out 
a big wad of cash at one time, it's going to be more manageable in the summer than it would be like in the spring or the fall. That's my strategy. Okay, let's talk about exactly how to raise your rates because I get a lot of questions about this, about like how to word it, like when to tell people. Before I do that, if you're a piano teacher and you're finding this helpful, would you hit that like button? Because it tells me to make more content like this video in the future. Okay, so how do you raise your rates? Personally, I make a lesson price template. It's like this sheet that has like tables on it for private lessons, partner lessons, group lessons. If you take it for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, this is how much it costs. This is a discount for paying in full. So I just send that out every trimester. I send it out to everybody as an attachment to their email, which gives like the schedule and everything on it too. And I send it to them whether the rates are going up or not. So it's like they know it's coming. They expect that from me. So they can look at the rates before the trimester starts. And then if they did want to quit for some reason, they could let me know before ever paying that amount. I know some people like to make a really big deal out of raising rates, especially if they're raising it a large amount. And I do understand that. They'll like let people know six months in advance. Hey, this is the reason that I have to raise my rates and I just can't afford to teach lessons at this cheaper price and expect this to to come next year. I have never taken that approach to it because I don't think that you like have to get into like some sort of sob story, like giving people excuses and like, this is why I can't be cheap anymore. I don't know, like, I don't like that vibe. And I also don't feel like I owe people an explanation on why I chose the rates I do, but like you do you. If that feels better to you, then you have a good connection with your students and you wanna let them know, you know, a year in advance, hey, in 2026, the rates are gonna go up or whatever, then that's totally fine. Like, I'm sure people would appreciate that communication. For me, I'm just like, upcoming trimester, here's the schedule, here's the rates. You wanna sign up, let me know. So that's how I do it. And I already mentioned that I like to raise just a little bit each year. So I'm just talking like $5 or sometimes even less per month. Now, if you are raising your rates a little bit more, there are some things that you can do to soften the blow. One of those things I mentioned before, you can um, offer a discount for paying in full for a trimester. So if someone gives you that big chunk of cash um, right at the beginning of the semester and they are like basically committing for those months of lessons, then you can give them you know, 3% off, 5% off, 10% off, whatever feels good for you. So that first year that I raised the rates quite a bit, I actually offered a 15% discount for those who paid in full, which is like a big chunk of change. I do not do that much of a discount anymore. Now it's more like uh, between three and 5% for those who pay in full. But that kind of softened the blow for that first year when the rates went up and really helped out a lot of people. And then you can offer other options too. So, hey, you can't afford hour lessons, let's do half hour, or maybe you can offer like a 20 minute lesson so that you're making the amount per hour that you want to make and you're still serving that customer. And maybe you just don't get to one of your books each week or whatever. You can offer um, group lessons or partner lessons because then you are making like twice as much for that time, right? So you can charge each student a little bit less and you're seeing them at the same time. So I love partner lessons for that. It helps them out, it helps me out. I make more per hour and they pay less per hour. So it kind of works out for everybody. So definitely think about partner or group lessons as well. If you're looking to raise your hourly income, but lower the time you spend teaching, that can be a great way to do that. So at the end of the day, raising rates is really your decision and your decision alone. You have to do it in a way that feels good to you, but also helps you achieve your goals. If you're still feeling confused about like exactly what the number should be, because I did not mention any numbers in this video, I actually have a numbers video about how much to charge for lessons. So check that out. How much should I charge for lessons? There's even like a free download that you can do where you can like crunch the numbers and see if I wanna make this much, I have to have these many students paying me this much and so on. So check that out and I will see you there.